Okay guys, let's see the theory behind uh, cross-site request forgery uh, protection. First we will uh, draw our legitimate uh, client request. Let's imagine that this is our uh, web browser. And uh, here will be our API server. So we have one form. And if we load up this form without uh, contacting previously uh, the server, it's very easy for an attacker uh, to change the information uh, which we are sending to the server. So it will be hard to understand whether our user is sending the form, um, so if it's a legit user, or an attacker is performing a request which again goes uh, to the API server. Now, uh, in order to circumvent this, actually we can use a special token sent from the API server, the so-called session uh, token, and it will return this token the moment this uh, web page loads. So in this way our form will have additional token inside of it. Uh, it will be rendered together with our form, this token. And whenever we are making requests towards the server with our uh, form data, it will include this uh, token together with it. So, as a next uh, step, the server will check this uh, token sent from the client, whether it's the same uh, with its uh, session uh, created token. So, it will check the client token, whether it's the same with its uh, session token. And if it's the same, it will accept the request and uh, it will be um, set as valid request. So if in this case an attacker tries to hack into this request and send it, it will not have an access to the token and uh, this way um, the attacker's attempt to send fake data will fail. In order for these techniques to um, success, we will need to have a persistence inside of our uh, API server. This means that session for each request is required and this is actually a stateful operation. Now there is a second way called uh, double cookie submission. Basically it uh, removes the sessions uh, from the server but it sends the token through a cookie. Okay, let's describe this technique now. So first we need to form the session token and to send it as a cookie uh, to the client. And this cookie, the client needs to read it. And whenever a request comes, we need to send the same cookie. Uh, the thing is that uh, this cookie, if it's sent with uh, HTTP only flag, the client will not be able to read it through JavaScript, but it will be transferred just because the browser uh, can transform such cookies uh, between uh, the server and the client. Now, since the attacker will not be able to uh, read and manipulate this cookie, uh, basically will have um, achieved some sense of protection. The thing is that the attacker can reside its code in a subdomain, and if this happens, the attacker will be able to read this cookie and again send uh, malformed data, and this will be accepted by the server no matter of uh, what kind of comparisons we are making here. That's why we'll be creating a second cookie, which is based on the first one, and it's uh, based on the hash value of the first one, and we'll be transforming this cookie and sending it to the client. So once the client receives the second cookie, it will be sent not with HTTP only flag, and this cookie can be sent directly uh, to the server. So basically we're sending not only the session cookie, but also a special cross-site request uh, forgery a protection uh, cookie. And again, here in the server, we need to do a double check. First is uh, for the session cookie. 
Uh, and the second is for the uh, newly created and a sent token based on the session cookie. Now, if the attacker has a subdomain and tries to read and uh, manipulate our second token, since uh, we are not sending with uh, HTTP only cookie mode uh, this uh, second token, it might try to modify it and send it back. So here we'll have the session token and as well as the cross-site request uh, uh, forgery uh, token. In this case, internally, the server will check whether the session token matches. Since the second token is based on the first one, any modification of the second token will be considered as invalid because the first token cannot be read by the attacker since it's sent by HTTP-only cookie.